indeed welcome to this virtual worship service at Redeemer United Church, located in the small community of Zeal, Marion, Texas. Thanks to Grace Kundi, our pianist, for this service, and thanks to David Albright for uh, taping this service. And the altar flowers are given by David and Shirley Albright in honor of their grandson's birthday. And also, the other altar flowers all together are given by our Redeemer Church Council in honor of our graduates. And we wish our graduates well and much success. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining together in this virtual worship service. It's great to have you sharing with us. Again, for our concerns, we pray for all of those dealing with the corona, COVID-19 virus, um, and especially the anxiety and the emotional stress that uh, everybody is feeling at this particular time because of the duration of the illness. And we pray for all of those who need special prayers for health and for strength and for the healing power from the living God. We also want to lift up our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, all of those who are on the front line who are sacrificing their lives, their health, their family to help others. any others that we need to lift up, we will do so later in our time of prayer. Let us now hear our call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It is good to worship and to honor the Lord our God, for your word gives us life and salvation. Let us worship the living God. Let us now join our hearts and our souls for our prayer of praise and adoration. Let us pray. As we gather for worship, indeed we give thanks that you have chosen us to be your own. By your word, the heavens were made. Your loving kindness fills the whole earth. Hear us as our voices are lifted in praise of your name. Come, be with us. Bless us in this, our time of worship. I read to you now our gospel lesson, which is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And this is where Jesus appears to his disciples and gives them power and enthusiasm to go out into the world to spread the good news. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near to them and said to them, I have been given all authority on heaven and earth. Go then, therefore, to all the peoples everywhere, making them my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And then the beautiful words, And lo, 
I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sermon topic for this service is what are your dreams we all dream at night but we have dreams in our daily living that we need to fulfill so the title is what are your dreams last week was Pentecost and we were to have been filled with the power and the spirit of the risen Christ. Well, did the power of the Holy Spirit stick? It's been a week later, and we wonder, where is the spirit? Are we still spiritually uplifted? Or where are we? Are we still filled? Are we only half filled? Or are we dwindling in the Spirit? Where are we today, June 7, 2020? Today, are you floating high with the Spirit? Or are you half moping? Do we really believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Or are we doubtful, as the scripture says, that some of the disciples were doubtful? Well, there's always good news. There's always good news with the gospel. Always good news when we come to worship. Because wherever we are today, that is okay. Because the Lord is willing to pick us up from wherever we are and make us soar again. That is so important for our lives. But do we really want to soar like an eagle? Because it can be risky soaring like an eagle. Do we want to really soar like an eagle or do we want to just stay where we are or as the beloved hymn goes, and I love to say this line, just as I am. Is that where we want to be, or do we want to soar with the Spirit? Today, it would be good for us to remember how God's Spirit swept into the lives of those early disciples and transformed them into dynamic persons and dynamic ambassadors of the good news of Jesus the Christ. You know, those early disciples' lives were fully empowered with the Spirit, and they had great dreams of what they could share with others about the risen Christ. They didn't just sit on their hands, they didn't just stay in hiding, they went out and shared the good news of the Gospel. In fact, they were so excited because Jesus told them in our gospel lesson that I just read, Jesus told the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. Their lives were enthusiastic. They were full of the Holy Spirit. Today, we must look at ourselves to see whether or not our lives are full of the Spirit. Are we vibrant? Are we alive like those early disciples were? And of course, after Jesus' death, they became the apostles who shared the good news. Are we as vibrant as they were back then, 2,000 years ago? A question that we all need to ask ourselves. Am I as vibrant as those early Christians? 
One of my favorite passages, Joel 2, verse 28, comes from the Old Testament. I truly love the prophecy recorded in that Old Testament prophet. I loved it back in the seminary days uh, and my Texas Lutheran days as well, but I still love it ever so much today. And the prophecy of the book of Joel is, and I quote, and it shall come to pass afterward that I, God, will pour out my spirit upon all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men and women shall dream dreams, and your young men and women shall see visions. These are beautiful words of life, my friends. We need to ask ourselves, have we been dreaming dreams and seeing visions? When we stop dreaming dreams, when we stop seeing visions, then truly life is over. I have to say that again because I love those words. When we stop dreaming dreams and when we stop seeing visions about what can be, then truly life is over. We have to dare to dream. That is our challenge for us this morning in our gospel lesson. We have to dream that God has great things in store for us. We also have to have great dreams for our dear Redeemer Church. It's twofold. We have to have dreams for our own lives and we have to have dreams for our Redeemer Church. That is so important. We have to have dreams. We've got to dare to believe that God is alive and at work and that God's presence does give power and meaning for our lives each and every day. For you see, our lives are shaped by the dreams that we have. Without a clear sense of who we are and where we are going and what we want to accomplish in life, we don't have that. We have a tendency to wander aimlessly and un productively. The people of the early church had a very simple but a very clear-cut vision of what their purpose was, what their dream was, what their vision was. They were to call men and women to faith in Jesus the Christ. They were to go and tell the good news that Jesus had given to them. And by golly, empowered by the Spirit, they were spectacularly successful at it. Just think how the Christian church has grown down through the centuries. We too, each one of us, we need a dream, not just for our own lives. We need a dream for our own lives, yes, but we need a dream for our church as well. So, where are we today? Where are you? Where am I? Do we want to dream big dreams? Dreams for our lives? For what we can be and do? Do we have li uh, dreams for our beloved Redeemer Church? Or do we want to just stay at the status quo and not really dream big dreams and have great visions? If we are excited about our faith, we will share it with others and the church will grow through our enthusiasm like the early disciples in our gospel lesson that I just read. And if we have great dreams for our lives, we will pursue those dreams and have great excitement in life. 
Let us think. Let us pray. Let us do something about our spiritual lives. Let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us dream great dreams for our lives and for our beloved Redeemer Church. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving God, we pause to give thanks unto you for blessing our lives so richly and that you continually give to us each and every day. Be with those who are ill. Be with those who need your help, your strength, your healing power. Help us, O oh Lord, in these troubling days of the coronavirus. Be with us, be beside us, wherever we may go. And may we always, yes, always know that you are near and dear unto us. Help us to call upon you and to know that you will always hear our every prayer. Be with us, O Lord, as we lead this service and as we go out into the world and to share with others your good news. And O Lord, we ask that you be the grand physician of our lives and that you help all of those who are ill, those who are in our nursing facilities, those who need your special blessings of health and strength and healing power. And hear us as we now pray silently for our own personal concerns. Now hear us as we join together in the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have our invitation to give of our offerings, of our gifts, for the life, the work, the mission of our beloved Redeemer Church. So we ask that you check with our website or our newsletter for 
new and innovative ways to give to Redeemer Church. May you be blessed in your giving. And now let us receive the benediction. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and souls forevermore in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you.